Thanks for joining us again on Celebrating Act Two, the user manual for the second half of your life. And of course, Art and I make it a point because we are a user manual. We want an expert in every subject of life. And that's why we bring Dr. Liz on on a regular basis. Thank you, Dr. Liz. Good to see you again. Likewise. Good morning, Dr. Liz. Uh, I have a uh, uh, a question for you. We, we've we spoken about the brain, and uh, I remember one of our first conversations was you asked us, well, how many things can a person do at once? And I think we pretty much got to the point, well, only really, we're not really multitasking, we're actually doing one at a time and swapping in and out. So everybody thinks that the brain is sort of like a computer, but we know from conversations with you and some other uh, articles I've read that it really is it's like this this mass of of of, of uh, liquids and chemicals and electrical neurons and so on. So, so, is there anything new on the brain front these days? Yes, yes, uh, absolutely. I was really impressed. I, I wrote it down as a note when I heard it at the anti aging conference that I was at because I thought of it the same way, like you just said, that the brain of being more like a computer but it's really an electrochemical organ. Mm. Electrochemical, you bathed in all these different hormones and chemistry and influenced by outside chemicals as we know, right? And that is why things such as electric shock therapy, that's why it actually can be helpful. Hmm. That, that makes sense. Right. I mean, I, I yeah. knew that, but I, really thinking about the brain differently uh, really brought it into focus. And so I thought I would share with you today a couple of different methods of helping people with uh, anything regarding the brain. So depression, what they call treatment resistant depression. So you're not, not talking about you're not talking about a, a brain injury like a blow to the head. You're talking about. Uh, Correct. Uh, psych psychological things where we, we get into a funk. Well, no, I'm talking about brain illnesses, but I just made a little note so that we can do another segment another time on traumatic brain injury. Mm. But again, it's important to consider the fact that the brain is this, again, just pick, I'm just picturing the brain just bathed in these chemicals. So if you have an injury to one side, that's why it can affect so much. And that's why doing things uh, that are hormonal or otherwise chemical can help, not just a, a physical recovery. Yeah. So there were a couple of techniques that are becoming more popular that I thought I would share with you. Oh, good. What, the first one is trans, it's called TMS, transcranial magnetic stimulation. So if you're a listener and you haven't heard about this yet, you'll probably hear more about it because it is rising in popularity. Uh, in Northern California, in the Bay Area, it's rising fast in popularity. And this refers to, uh, and it again, treatment-resistant depression is a particular form of the diagnosis related to depression that TMS uh, may be a helpful technique. Right? And so it's a magnet. It's a device that causes a shallow magnetic field. The device looks like a coil in a figure eight and goes on different areas around the brain. Uh, external, it's an office, just in someone's office who has the TMS machine. Uh, and that shallow magnetic field, it moves around, okay? and it causes electrical currents in the brain, hmm. right? So it's a vastly, you could consider it a really mild method of doing electric therapy in the brain without the huge process that it is. And electric shock therapy is not, it's still around because it works, uh, but it, we're trying to find uh, more user-friendly uh, easier to implement in the office uh, method. So TMS seems to be a, a good potential method to help with treatment resistant depression and potentially over time with other brain disorders as well and other brain related illnesses. So diagnosing and treating, 
that's the yeah. another interesting feature of TMS is that it can be used to diagnose as well as to treat. Oh, that's interesting. Now, of course, Dr. Liz, when you say um, electroshock therapy, we all think of TV shows and movies yes. where they put the paddle yes. on the head. One, ah, one, flew, one flew over the cuckoo's dust. That's yeah, what comes to mind for me. Yeah. So, TMS, uh, the TMS therapy, I assume, is very gentle and mild. That is and correct. And we're not going to be jumping around and... Correct. It's not like we got tased. That's exactly right. Yeah. That's correct. Mm. Yes. Yes, that is right. And there's Good. another one that's becoming, another method that is gaining popularity, and that is ketamine therapy. Ketamine is very interesting. I learned about ketamine more than 30 years ago in my medical residency program, in my OBGYN residency. And it is actually derived from PCP. Interesting. It is considered what they call a dissociative anesthetic, as in causes you to separate a little bit, dissociate from your usual brain function. And uh, it's like a trance type of state, all right? It gives pain relief, it gives sedation, and it gives a little bit of amnesia. And that is how come we used to do it. We used to use it for very quick procedures that were extremely uncomfortable for the patient, but were very quick. So they didn't need to have general anesthesia, for example. All right. And so that's, but we were sort of instructed to avoid it because it would give very vivid uh, hallucinations potentially. Okay. And now here it is uh, gaining in popularity uh, to use for treatment resistant depression. And it appears to be very helpful. It could be given as an intranasal spray so that it's a very small dose and very quick acting and short acting. Uh, it can also be given as an injection. And I'm aware of this being done in psychiatrists' offices and even sometimes working with a therapist. Well, wow. these are all good things to know. Yes. Yes, and it's important because unfortunately, it's even available to people to do as an online process. This is the latest. Uh, I was talking with a friend who's a therapist and she pointed this out and I was shocked when I, I took a look at it. So it's possible for people to be able to do this type of treatment without actually meeting a person live in person, yeah. which I still recommend. Once you have a relationship with a doctor or a therapist, I think that virtual appointments are okay. However, what's most important about uh, using ketamine, they are now calling it ketamine guided therapy. So you do you want to work with someone who's familiar with the process, who's aware of the ins and outs of it, and who can do the guiding therapeutic process while you're using that dose of ketamine. So it's very important to have good, proper professional help and guidance with this. Yeah. Well, once again, uh, uh, these are areas that we don't normally, and our audience doesn't normally come across. And we thank you for keeping us up to date. Thank you. For more on Celebrating Act Two, visit our webpage, follow us on Facebook, subscribe to us on YouTube, and tell your friends, Celebrating Act Two is the user manual for the second half of your life.